I am static. I'm not electrifying. I'm not shocking. I'm static. When am I going to leave the Pacific Northwest? I mean, when am I going to be in quartzite? That's sort of why I'm making this video to answer all these questions. Static is the key here. Static is the answer. Well, it is a blustery day outside, so I thought I would hide away today inside, away from the winds. Made myself a fresh cup of coffee, and I thought it would be a good day just to record a little coffee chat. Now, if you're new here, my name is Scott, and I live out of a minivan. And this is an occasional on-again, off-again, occasional uh, video series I do called A Coffee Chat in a Van. So, welcome. Now, I thought I'd answer a few questions today, and the first question we will answer here is... Is this decaf? Yes, I am still drinking decaf coffee on occasion. I have actually switched back to regular coffee, but uh, I'm going to keep my eye out for some more decaf. This is, in fact, some decaf coffee, and uh, I'll be buying some more decaf and trying some more decaf just because it's a whole new bit of coffee for me to try, and so I might as well just try it out. Uh, lots of people ask me my opinions about decaf coffee, and I have not had a whole lot of experience with decaf, and so I figure I'll just keep it going and try out some decaf uh, as I travel to new places, like I always do. I like to try new coffees in new areas where I stop, and why shouldn't I just add decaf to the list? Makes perfect sense. I don't know why I haven't thought of it before. So, uh, drinking decaf today. I will be drinking some more decaf in the future. Um, I do really like the fog line decaf that I bought. Uh, if you have been watching my regular vlogs, uh, that one I think is very good. And uh, at first, I wasn't quite so sure what to think of it, but it is a very good cup of coffee. And um, I think uh, that's one I'll definitely buy again going forward, but I do want to try some new decaf coffees from other coffee roasters. Uh, so that's that's something that you, you'll see me try in the regular vlogs going forward. So that is question number one taken care of. And the next questions are really more related to my van, even though maybe they might not seem like it at first. But I've had a number of questions about uh, when am I going to leave the Pacific Northwest and get down to the desert. Uh, a number of people have asked me when am I going to be in quartzite uh, or when am I going to be in Southern California. And the answer to that has been the same answer that I've been giving all year long. In fact, I think it's been more than a year I've been saying that I don't want to return to the desert. Uh, don't want to return to Quartzsite. I don't want to ever return to San Diego. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that. And the biggest reason is I just like it in the Northwest better than anywhere else. I don't see a reason to travel down to Quartzsite every year. Uh, it's a big trip. Uh, if you take a look at a map, that is a lot of miles uh, to cover and I really don't enjoy that big of a drive anymore. I really like to stay in one spot most of the time. And a big clue to that is my name. Uh, my name is Static Camper Van for a reason. Yes, I live out of a camper van. And yes, I am static most of the time. Uh, I'm, I'm not fully charged, I'm saying. I'm not electric. Uh, I'm not shocking. I'm in one spot most of the time. And uh, I prefer to be in one spot most of the time. When I get to a town or an area that I like, I like to stay there. And so I like to become static in a place that I like. Now, if I get to a place that I'm not so happy with, I'm not quite so static. Uh, so I will move at that point. Uh, the other thing that uh, would make me move is really harsh weather. Uh, that's something that you get in the desert. Uh, now, maybe the desert doesn't seem like it gets very cold, but I, I think uh, quartzite gets a little bit uh, cold and windy. I don't like wind. One of the reasons I'm inside here today is I'm avoiding the wind outside going on right now. Lots of storms uh, here in the Pacific Northwest, and I'm not so crazy about wind. So on days like today, I just 
get in my nice little comfortable home and drink lots of coffee and get some work done, uh, cook some food, and avoid the wind as much as I can. Now, if I were in Arizona, uh, and I don't mean to pick on quartzite, but uh, if I were in Arizona or one of the deserts, even Southern California, uh, wind is incessant. Uh, the wind just never seems to stop. And so that's one big reason for me to avoid the desert. I'm not saying it's a, a bad place to be, and I'm not saying that people that go to the desert every w winter are crazy. I'm just saying that I don't like it for myself. Uh, I put up with desert weather for more than 40 years. If you're not aware, I was born and raised in the Southern California desert and lived most of my life there. Um, I've spent enough time in the desert. Uh, now that I find that I like the Pacific Northwest weather better, uh, and just the whole vibe of the Pacific Northwest, I would prefer just to stay up here. Uh, but there is one little problem with staying in the Pacific Northwest, and that is power. Uh, it does get dark out. Uh, surprisingly, today is not dark out. We've got some sun shining. Uh, even though the weather forecast was saying it was going to rain all day today, we've got plenty of sun. I've got plenty of solar power here, but that is an issue. Uh, a big issue for me, and so that is another reason that would chase me out of the Pacific Northwest, or at least out of an area of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I was spending some time around Seattle trying to stay near friends, uh, but it got too dark, and so I took off. And I've happened to found some sun here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, even though I am back in California. Uh, so you just never really know. Uh, but that is, that is something that would have me move and that would keep me from being static. Uh, I would have to just find some sun when I need it. Um, and there's another question that gets raised a lot. Uh, why do I not have my alternator charging my solar battery? Uh, this is a big question. Uh, people get quite, quite upset with me about this. They say that it would solve all my problems and then I'd get plenty of power just uh, hooking up my alternator to my house battery here, and then I wouldn't have to worry about sunshine at all. But unfortunately, that brings up another little issue for me. Um, I do not have my alternator hooked up to my solar electric system because I have engine issues, and actually more recently I have transmission issues with my van. Uh, my van is eight years old now, uh, I have about 95,000 miles on it, and it's not a lot of miles, uh, obviously, when you're talking about some makes and models of vehicles, but this is uh, a Ram van, and uh, people think that they're, they're a Fiat van, uh, and that was what I thought that they were for a long time too, but really there's no Fiat parts in these vans. They are mostly made up of Jeep parts, so all the running gear is Jeep. Uh, the engine, uh, the transmission, uh, the suspension parts. That's all Jeep stuff. And uh, I always thought Jeep was a, a good, reliable vehicle, but I'm finding lately that it seems to be the same as the other Dodge and Ram and Chrysler products. They're just not so great anymore. I, I actually think that this van would be better served if it had a Fiat running gear. But they didn't offer that. Um, Fiat is, is known for making a pretty decent small diesel engine and pretty decent manual transmissions. These vans were not offered with that. These vans came with one choice. You got uh, just one engine, gas engine, and one choice of transmission that is an automatic transmission. So that's what I have. And uh, for the most part, this fan has been really reliable. Uh, in fact, over the last eight years, it has been the most reliable vehicle I've ever owned. Now, I did buy it brand new, and so I was able to keep up on the maintenance as much as I could. And uh, as far as leaving me stranded or, or anything like that, the van has never done that. Um, I have had to put a couple of batteries in it and several sets of tires um, some brake pads and things, things like that. But uh, as far as just normal wear and tear stuff, uh, that's that's all I've really needed to do with this fan. Now, I do have the issues going forward. 
uh, with the transmission and the engine. And those aren't easy answers there, but as far as getting power off of them to power my house battery here back back in my living space, it's just not something I think is, is a good idea because of uh, the way that that the engine and transmission are, are aging quite poorly. I really want to keep my driving to a minimum. But beyond that, um, I am static. Again, I'm not electrifying. I'm not shocking. I'm static most of the time. I spend most of my time not driving. Uh, and that really is why I have that name. That name is, is apt. Uh, I don't ever want to be shocking. I don't ever want to be electrifying. I, I just really want to be in one spot most of the time, and that's why my name is Static. So even if I didn't have engine and transmission issues that I'm going to have to deal with in the future, I would still just not want to have uh, a lot of driving. I prefer to be in one spot, uh, especially if I find a city that I really like and I feel comfortable in. I would prefer to stay in that spot for as long as possible. So this has been the basis of my van life uh, going back from when I first started now almost eight years ago. The whole idea for me was to just avoid bad weather uh, if I could and to find places that I enjoy being in. So that's what I want to keep on doing and I have no intentions of changing that. I want to keep my driving to a minimum and I want to find places that I enjoy being uh, and that have nice weather. And when I do find a place that has good weather, some sunshine to keep my power going and uh, some nice people that are uh, pleasant to be around and chat with as I'm out and about during the day, that's all I really am looking for. And so that's what I want to keep doing. Uh, so even even if I had a brand new vehicle with no maintenance issues at all, I would still just keep my driving to a minimum. I would still just not have uh, my solar hooked up to my engine. Uh, all, all of that, I would keep the same, uh, and I would hopefully be static, uh, just the same as I am now. Uh, static is the key here. Static is the answer uh, to most of the questions that I get. And uh, now that I have had some issues looming, uh, it just means that I need to just focus a little bit more on being more static. This last year, uh, 2023, I, I kind of went the wrong way. So back in 2022, I drove 6,000 miles all year long. That's my total mileage all year long. Now, I kind of lost the plot a little bit. In, uh, in 2023, I drove 8,000 miles, so definitely going the wrong direction there. I want to get that down. In fact, I think uh, about four or 5,000 miles a year would be about right for me. I think that that's what I'm kind of aiming towards. So um, kind, of, kind of went the wrong way here this last year, but I'm, I'm getting back already this year. I'm getting back to less driving. In fact, the last four days, I have driven five miles total. So uh, starting the year off uh, on, the right, on the right foot here, becoming more static and becoming more me, what I want to do. I want to be more static. So again, that, that's the answer. Being, being static is, is the answer for me. So in my mind, being static is the ultimate answer because not only is it what I want to do, I want to be driving and moving less, but it's also better for my mechanical situation that I'm facing here in the future. Uh, the less I drive uh, means the longer my van is going to last. And that's really the thing that kind of gets lost in translation, I think, uh, and that probably I should be saying a little bit more. I was hoping that people would kind of pick up on that a little bit, but I think the fact that most people don't understand that static means uh, being in one spot most of the time. Uh, that's what that means to me. Uh, and so I think once you understand that, you'll understand that really what I need to do is to travel a little bit less. Uh, now that doesn't mean I'm going to stop traveling. 
Uh, in fact, uh, I still like to travel. I still like to get to new places and see new places. Um, some of my favorite places are uh, miles away from where I'm at right now. And I have every intention of getting back there uh, to, to those places. Uh, they're places that I just enjoy being in. Uh, maybe they're places that I have friends and family. So that would be another reason for me to travel back there. So... I am going to take advantage of the fact that I do live on wheels and that I can move around when I want to or need to, but uh, the fact that I'm happiest being in one spot more than I am traveling uh, and the fact that less traveling means my van is going to last a little bit longer uh, are all good reasons for me just to double down on being static and, and not shocking not electric, being static in one spot more. Now, of course, I do realize that this van is not going to last forever. Uh, it's not the best made vehicle, and there are some issues with getting it fixed. Um, there are certain aspects of the van that can be fixed and, and bring it back to like new. Uh, there are other aspects like the engine that just have no fix, unfortunately, and so it does mean I'm kind of on borrowed time with this van, uh, so it will need to be replaced eventually, and as far as what vehicle I'm going to get after this van, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know what it, it will be. Uh, I can tell you what it won't be. Uh, it will not be any kind of recreational vehicle. I don't want an RV. I've, I've never wanted an RV, and an RV would really uh, bring a lot more headaches to my life. I would really have to change how I live uh, a great deal. Uh, it would mean I would, I'd have to stay out of places that I spend a lot of time in, and it would also mean that I would not be able to get to places that I'm easily able to get to a place uh, in a regular vehicle like I'm driving right now. There are a lot of advantages to minivans, and so I hope to have another minivan in the future. Uh, I do like a cargo van like I have right now that doesn't have windows, uh, but I might have to, uh, if, if I want another minivan, I might have to settle with a minivan that has windows in it. Uh, and the reason I don't want to be too specific about the next vehicle uh, is that I would be open to a pickup truck uh, with a with a topper on the back. Uh, that That's another idea. Uh, I, I just don't want to rule out a vehicle. Uh, maybe an SUV is another option. Um, that that would be, if I got a bigger SUV, it would give me about the same kind of space that I have here in this minivan. Uh, and that's why I throw a pickup truck with a topper uh, in, into that. Uh, again, not an RV slide-in camper uh, setup on a pickup truck, but... Uh, just a topper, and it would give me kind of the same space that I have here in the minivan. So those are all options, and I, I think that uh, I don't want to uh, leave anything out. So once it comes time that I do have to get rid of this, get rid of this van and get a new vehicle, I want to be open to whatever it is that uh, is out there. Uh, there might be a good deal on something, uh, or there might be something that's in really good shape that just lends itself to being my next vehicle. But it will be a, another vehicle. Uh, it's not going to be an RV. Um, hopefully it won't be a car because I need a little more space. Uh, as I'm getting older, I, I'm finding that I really uh, am enjoying my comfortable sleep and I'm really enjoying kind of the space that I have to get up and move around and sit upright on days where I'm uh, hiding away from the weather outside like I am today. So hopefully I'll find something that is not smaller than what I have, but I, I definitely don't need anything bigger than, than what I have right now. Uh, a minivan to me is the perfect vehicle, and I'm hoping that my next vehicle will be a minivan, but I'm open to the possibilities of whatever is out there when the inevitable time comes, uh, but I really don't want to think about that because this van has been so good to me for the last eight years that I've, that I've owned it. Uh, I really don't want to think about the day that I have to give it up. 
maybe that answers that question. I, I get that question a lot, you know, what am I going to get next? And, you know, I just want to keep it open so that I get the right vehicle next time, because this was the right vehicle for me uh, up until now. And um, I would like to have this vehicle, this great little minivan. This has been a great little van for me. I'd like to keep this van for a few more years if it's possible. Uh, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. So I'm just being open to whatever needs to happen. And I'm trying not to worry about things so much, but uh, it is kind of it is kind of hard not to worry when I get lots of questions about, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You need to make a decision. There's a little story that I was kind of going back and forth about uh, relating here, but, um, maybe I'll just tell it, uh, just to tell you my mindset here, what, where I'm at. Um, I, I had somebody just a few weeks back, uh, get quite angry with me. Uh, they, they sat me down. They told me that I need to start a GoFundMe, uh, so that I can get funds to buy a new van. And I asked them why, why should I do a GoFundMe? And they said, because you shouldn't have to pay for your next vehicle. I could not get this person to give me a reason of why I should have to do a GoFundMe and why I shouldn't have to pay for my own vehicle. This is my vehicle. Why should I not have to pay for my vehicle? They, they never gave me an answer to that. And it was, it was quite an infuriating half an hour discussion uh, for both of us, because I could not see their point of view, and they could not see mine. Uh, they were quite insistent. Uh, in fact, they started to yell at me. Uh, and they, they yelled at me for a good 15 minutes straight. I didn't get a word in for about 15 minutes, as they just let me have it. They told me that I needed to start a GoFundMe. I needed to do it that day. They wanted to get it started with me, and uh, and that I, I, it was just inevitable that I need to do it. And I, I said, I, I don't. I don't need to do anything. Uh, and why should somebody have to pay for my next vehicle? Uh, in fact, I told them, why would I do a GoFundMe when I am young enough and healthy enough to get another job if I needed to? I have two jobs now, but if I needed a third job, I could certainly do that if I needed to. And they said, no, no, nope. Uh, so that, 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 was a, that was a strange little back and forth there. And that, that might give you a kind of an understanding of why I don't like to talk too much about the van situation and what am I going to do? Uh, because I seem to have a lot of opinions being thrown at me about what I should do. Everybody seems to know what I should do. Uh, and they don't really take my thoughts or, or feelings into, into the consideration of that. And so most of the time, I would just prefer not to talk about it. Um, I do have a plan. Uh, as I told that person, I have a plan. I am saving for a new vehicle. Um, I will tell you, it, the savings are not happening quite as quickly as I would like them to. Uh, but I, I'm working in that direction. And uh, I think when the time comes... And when the right vehicle comes along, uh, it'll happen. And uh, until then, there's no real need for me to worry about anything. Uh, again, this van has been a really good van. Uh, the best vehicle I've ever owned. To, to just want to dump it and to get something else doesn't seem like a real good idea right this moment. Um, and maybe in six months' time, I'll, I'll have a change of heart about that. Uh, or maybe even next month the transmission will explode and, and I'll, I'll be forced to look for something else. But from my point of view, I think I just need to keep on saving. Uh, maybe I do need to get a third job. Uh, maybe I need to double down on the two jobs that I have. I mean, there's another option there. Maybe that's all I need to do. But what I don't need to do is to worry about it. Uh, and... Uh, I think what I do need to do is to be more static. Uh, I need to be in one place more. Uh, that will allow me to do a little more work, 
uh, and that will keep the mileage of this van down, and that means this van will last a lot longer. Uh, so that's, that's a part of the plan that I'm working on. So far, the plan has been going really well. Uh, by cutting down on my mileage, I've, I've noticed uh, it, it's really kept down on all the things that I need to do. Uh, oil changes, tires, brakes, all of those things I, I don't have to do quite so much. And so that does help uh, me save for the next vehicle. So I think those are all the real big questions I have uh, to answer right now. And um, I know I didn't talk a lot about what I do for work. I do have a video that uh, I do talk about what I do for work and why I don't talk about work. Uh, it's much the same as why I don't like to talk about the van situation. There's lots of opinions that are thrown at me and and it seems like people aren't real nice about giving their opinions to me. And so uh, when it comes to those kinds of things, I, I just talk less about them uh, because that leaves me happier. Uh, I'm much happier when I don't have people yelling at me, telling me what I need to do. And I need to do this and I need to do that. And I, I really rarely ever agree with somebody when they tell me I need to, to do something. So what I've been doing lately is when somebody says that I need to do something, I just ignore it. And I focus on something that makes me happier. Uh, something like a nice cup of coffee. And, you know, getting back to this decaf question here, I really have been liking the decaf. Uh, I don't really see much of a reason to avoid decaf coffee. I don't know why people look down on decaf so much. If it tastes good and has a nice flavor, what difference does it make? Um, it makes me happy. Uh, so it's, it's one of my little things that make me happy. And, and because people have been yelling at me so much, so, so much uh, lately, I've been drinking a little more coffee. And with the decaf, of course, I can drink lots and lots of it and um, have no ill effects whatso whatsoever. So I'm going to keep going on the decaf and I'm going to actually finish my cup here and I think I've can finish my cup here because I've answered all those questions that I have been getting lately um, not that anybody actually watches these videos all the way through but at least I've made an effort to answer the questions that I get asked several times a day every day every week <laughs> uh, Thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it.